A joyous welcome to worship at St. Paul. What a great day it is to gather in our Lord's house. A welcome to all here today and also to those listening and watching online. God's peace be with you as we focus tonight and this weekend on prayer, uh, God's gift of prayer to his people. As we come to Jesus in our prayers, uh, we can cast all of our cares on our loving Savior. With great uh, joy and opportunity, I want to bring before you uh, Mr. Peterson. Greg Peterson is going to share with us from the Capital Campaign a few brief words and updates for us. So thank you, Mr. Peterson. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm here representing St. Paul's Church and School Capital Campaign, Making Room for God's People. I have three things to report on. Where we were at the start of the campaign, where we are now, after your prayerful consideration, and where we're headed. Well, where were we when we started this process? After deciding as a congregation that we were gonna proceed with the beautiful classroom addition on the north side of the building and acquire 1926 Center Street in an effort to relieve some of our space shortages for pastoral, staff, church, school, and community needs, we exhausted our rainy day fund and also took out a loan from the Lutheran School Extension Fund. Well, where are we now? Well, I can joyfully report that nearly 150 families have contributed almost $650,000 to extinguish our loan um, and also help rebuild our rainy day fund. The property at 1926 Center Street generates rental income to insist, assist in all of St. Paul's um, needs and we're very blessed not only by your financial gifts, but also by your prayers and kind words that we've heard throughout this process. We really want and need to take stock and reflect on how fortunate we are and that we can be proud of our accomplishments. And of course, none of this would be possible without God. Well, where are we headed? Our space needs have improved for St. Paul, uh, but we have not yet solved those challenges, hence making room for God's people. We still hope to acquire two of the remaining properties on the block when they become available, which we can't know when that is. Um, and the Rainy Day Fund is also very helpful with the unexpected needs that frequently present themselves with a, over a 100-year-old building. And also just unexpected needs sometimes come up. You can continue to contribute to the campaign with the yellow bordered envelope that's in the front of your uh, box. You can use the gifting pad, a tab on the St. Paul website. You can just write on an envelope capital campaign and, and put it into the collection plate. You can use whatever means that you feel led to use. We've to been told several kind of funny stories about how people have generated a few dollars here and there. Um, and those examples were uh, written in the Holy Grapevine and we'll likely repeat them just from an informational perspective. And um, our progress is due to your prayerful consideration and action on what you uh, heard and we pray that, pray that this will continue towards our long-term goal. Thank you for listening, and congratulations on our just remarkable progress. Thanks be to God for the, gener the generosity of God's people and for the support of this campaign and the opportunity it will um, afford generations to come at St. Paul as we share the gospel in this place and outside of these walls. Uh, God is, is working in the midst of all things, so we thank you for your love and care with all of that. As we set our sights on October, making you aware of a number of October opportunities for congregational life together, our October 6th potluck is in need of table and chair setter-uppers. Uh, if you want to help set up, please sign up in the Narthex area. There's a uh, little spot there to not only mark your name if you're planning to attend, um, not necessary, but helpful. And then if you could also sign up to help set up tables and chairs that morning, October 6th, uh, looking for four to six people to come and do that before 10 o'clock. If you can make it before the eight o'clock worship and help um, do that, that's very helpful. October 18th is the pig roast, the PTL pig roast uh, ticket sales going on this weekend um, before, during, and service times and all those kind of things. So take a look at that opportunity. Also our envelope wall is up in the main hallway as you come past the office. Uh, maybe there's a way for you to partner with someone to grab an envelope and maybe chip in a partial, each party to do a little bit, or maybe pick a, uh, pick a Bible study group that you are part of and maybe the study group would like to 
support the youth as they head to New Orleans this coming summer and uh, do a, a group envelope that you share and, and do it that way, or to pick an envelope with your favorite number or an anniversary or something that is meaningful for you, and that number is your number to support. So thank you for your uh, support of that. Our last thing here as we gather for worship, encouraging all of your participation as we head into consecration uh, stewardship emphasis. We're going to be doing a, a stewardship program called Consecrated Stewards, and it is going to be through the month of October, beginning October 9th, 12th, and 13th weekend, and that's going to go for four weeks. Within those worship weeks, we're going to have a Bible study for four weeks. Encourage you to come and be a part of that, even though it's on a Sunday at 9.15, come back and join for the Bible study, as well as two weeks of sermons that will center on that theme of consecrated stewards. Our four-week emphasis will uh, also be um, notified, you'll be notified in the mail uh, with things pertaining to that consecrated stewards. Thank you for your participation and patience with those announcements. Our opening hymn is going to be hymn number 902. We will stand on verse 4 for the Trinitarian uh, verse of praise. Uh, those are the announcements, and our service begins with the ringing of the bell. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, 
word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us pause for a few moments of silent reflection upon this, our confession of sin, before our holy and gracious God. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. For the Lord will vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your renown, O Lord, throughout all ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, great us, Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Everlasting Father, source of every blessing, 
mercifully direct and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that we may complete the works you have prepared for us to do. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may please be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Numbers chapter 11. Now the rabble that was among the children of Israel had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give to their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep before me and say, give me meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you would treat me like this, kill me at once, if I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand there with you. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two main Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from James chapter 5. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord. We please rise for the Alleluia and verse.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me, for the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink, because you belong to Christ, will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We join in confessing our Christian faith this day through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may please be seated as we sing the sermon hymn 770. What a friend we have in Jesus.
May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace this day from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our dear Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. From James chapter 5, verse 15, And the prayer of faith will make the one who is sick well, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. This is our text. Prayer. What is it, and why must the Christian follower practice a daily habit of prayer? Let me start off by asking you a question if you've ever felt this way. Have you ever heard someone praying out loud in a group of people or maybe through the television and thought to yourself this, wow, I wish that I could pray like that. That sounded really good. I don't think I could ever do that. What well, seems like indeed some people can just pray so effortlessly. It seems like the words come so eloquently. They're polished, they're articulated, and they're well put together. We're sometimes afraid to pray out loud because, let's be honest, I don't sound like that. We don't quite think it flows so quite freely from our lips as we'd like it to. We're, we're afraid to pray. Well, let me tell you, if you've ever had thoughts like these, you're not alone. I can assure you of that. The very thought of public or even private prayer might produce some thought of anxiety or concern within you. You may not feel that comfortable, but I want to encourage you as we meditate on the verse today from James, if your prayer life has been lackluster, Jesus has a word for you tonight. It is in this very place throughout the school year that kids pray over the intercom, through the speaker system. Some of you can attest to it. Every single day throughout the school year, a child prays over the intercom. And not only does that prayer resonate within these walls, but it goes out into the playground, across the street, through the fences, and into the community. That prayer makes its way through the intercom into the lives of all who hear it. Talk about fear and anxiety. Some of our kids have that as they have to pray on their specific day. Now, perhaps you've heard of FOMO, fear of missing out. It's a term people in my generation have come up with to describe things that they're afraid of missing out on. But perhaps, even though that's true, we might alter that a little bit tonight so it's a different abbreviation. Not FOMO, but FOPO, fear of praying out loud. It's a struggle that we have. How to pray, what to pray, how do we articulate our words in such a way? How do we fine tune those words so they are words from the heart? Once I saw a sign as I was driving, and the sign said this, is prayer my steering wheel or my spare tire? That's a good way to think about prayer at times. How are we looking at prayer? What's prayer like for you? How about another FOPO, F-O-P-O? It's the fear of praying often. Maybe not so much a fear as it is a laziness or an, a lack of initiation. In regards to praying often, there's been some stories circulating out in the theological world about Martin Luther. You know, as time goes on, the tales grow tall, and it's sometimes a little difficult to figure out what's fact and what's a little bit of fiction or what things are kind of embellished throughout time. But supposedly, there is this interesting quote from Luther that's been around, and he said this, if I fail to spend two hours in prayer each morning, the devil gets the victory every day. I have so much busyness, I cannot go without spending three hours daily in prayer. Now, another version of this quote says pretty much the same thing. Work, work, from morning to late night. 
In fact, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. Now, isn't that a little different take on prayer? I've got so much to do that in order to get it done, I must spend time in prayer and meditation of God's word. There are three disciplines as the Christian examines their life and looks at it. Oratio, tentatio, meditatio, oration or prayer. Meditatio is meditation and tentatio is temptation. The devil presses us and drives us to God, drives us to prayer. As we meditate on God's word, these three things play a part in our Christian walk. Prayer, our oration, our talking out the words and thoughts of our hearts and lives, our meditating on that word of God, and finally our living the Christian walk, even if that means being pressed by the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh. So what is prayer? Why should we prioritize it? Well, the catechism definition of prayer is simply speaking to God in words and thoughts. Prayer is a sign of relationship and connection. When you pray to God, you're exhibiting a trust in God, a desire to walk with him in your life every day. So whether it's prayer at home, prayer at work, prayer behind the steering wheel, prayer in the shower, prayer in the field, prayer in the tree stand, Prayer among God's people. It is you walking with your Lord in relationship, knowing that he walks beside you. It's looking outside of ourselves for that which we need each and every day. Some in Jesus' day even got it confused. They looked inside themselves to see what good they could bring out in their prayer life. They were pious. They were pompous. They wanted their prayers to be known and felt by those around them. So much so that Jesus said, when you pray, go into your closet, shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and then you will be heard. It's easy to pray in a way that brings glory to our own accomplishments and merits. God, look at me. But our posture of prayer is different, dear friends of God. Our posture of prayer is one that folds our hands, bows our heads, and our hearts and our eyes look up toward Christ on the cross, who is seated above all things in glory. This Jesus, who has conquered sin and death, is the one who we fix our gaze upon. For prayer is a gracious activity. It allows us to be connected to our Savior and his work for us on the cross. I don't know if you've ever had time to think about prayer in those terms. I am united to Jesus in my life of prayer. He is connected to me through his love and work for me on the cross. For every good thing in our lives flows from that cross. The love of Christ comes to you through the cross of Jesus. God did not leave us helpless and hopeless, but he did for us on that cross what we could not do for ourselves. And because of that, dear friends, we have been given an attitude and cultivated in our lives an attitude of prayer and thankfulness. And you know what that thankfulness does? It safeguards us against unthankfulness, against looking into our own selves for what we think we can do best. God's commands even uphold this idea of prayer. The second commandment, testing your catechism knowledge, all right? You should not, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear. It's a different kind of fear. It's not the, um, I'm afraid of you, but it's respect and revere. We should fear and love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble. Pray, praise, and give thanks. Prayer is about praising God, praying to him, giving thanks, respecting the name, revering it, and honoring it. Prayer is not about fixing our eyes on ourselves, but looking to the Lord and saying this, Lord, I'm a poor, miserable sinner. With palms upturned and heart wide open, 
prayer reaches out to God to receive from him what only he can give to us, forgiveness, life, and salvation. It's like someone who comes before God with an empty sack, and they say, Lord, I've got an empty sack. Fill me up this week. As I come to you in prayer and worship, give me the gifts of grace and mercy, forgiveness. Give me life through Jesus, salvation, hope, patience, perseverance. Give me, Lord, for my life all the things that you know I need, and God delivers. God, give me daily bread. God, please provide a hedge of protection that I may be kept from evil and temptation. God, guard me against the, the things of this world that try to take my gaze off of your will. God, because of sin, I've got a lot of garbage in my life. Forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our basket. I'm not quite sure that's how it goes, but the idea is the same. Forgive us our trespasses. We're encouraged to pray. We're encouraged to praise and give thanks, to safeguard against unthankfulness, to safeguard against turning in on ourselves, to safeguard against becoming prey. We P-R-A-Y pray so we don't become P-R-E-Y pray. I like what the hymn verse says to us as we look at prayer. There's a hymn in our hymnal called I Walk in Danger All the Way. It's hymn 716. I like what the, these words say to us. I walk in danger all the way. The thought shall never leave me that Satan who has marked his prey is plotting to deceive me. The foe with hidden snares may seize me unawares if I should fail to watch and pray. I walk in danger all the way. What a great verse to remind us of the gift of prayer, watching and praying, twin concepts in our life as we look to God for all that he provides to us. And now you didn't hear about it today, but if you look at James chapter 5, there are three sections in James. The first section deals with money. The second section deals with patience. And the third section deals with prayer. Now, I walk in danger all the way if I fix my life on money. If I look at money and say, I want to get money, I want to receive money, I want to have money, I want to use money how I want to use it, well, watch and pray so you don't become prey. Patience in prayer. God calls us to follow the example of Jesus when he says, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And Jesus emptied himself on the cross in obedience to God and walked in patience according to the Father's will. And at that baptism of Jesus, God proclaimed, This is my beloved Son, with him I'm well pleased. His prayer to God the Father was, God, remove this cup from me. And God's response was, This is my Son, whom I love, I'm well pleased. He's going to the cross. Jesus' answer from the Father was, No, you must go. Sometimes God's answer to your prayers is going to be no. Sometimes it will be yes. And other times it'll be not yet. God's answer to our prayer is his perfect promises to us. This Jesus who died on the cross really gives us the first perfect uh, example of what prayer looks like. It's a cross. Our prayer goes up to God. Our prayer is heard by him. It is his will and his time. And then the, the arms extended in love is our response, our response to the world around us. Having been loved by God in such a way, we can then pray, we can reach out in love, we can continue to witness and share the love of Christ as his precious children. God calls us to rejoice always, pray continually. What a great thing that God has given us prayer, that he's modeled it for us, that he's provided an example for us. Now, I, I do want to share with you an example. This prayer packet is out on the welcomes table across from the elevator. If you are stumped in your own prayer life and you, you say, I just don't have the right tools at my disposal, this prayer packet can be very helpful for you. And if you have questions on it, 
uh, please ask me. This prayer packet includes examples of prayers. It includes different resources, books. It includes um, models of prayer, uh, psalms that you can pray as you pray through the word of God, uh, simple yet hopefully effective for you so that you may pray with boldness and confidence. One more hymn verse to leave you with. Come, my soul, with every care. Jesus loves to answer prayer. We've got that gift today. Prayer to the Father who has called us his dear child, loves us and invites us to pray to him. One final resource, page 305 in the hymnal. If you ever have questions on different prayers, 305 and following has a great resource list of prayers. You can use those in your spare time, before church, wherever and whenever. What a wonderful resource the hymnal gives us for prayer. And when you don't know what to say, say to God what he's already said to you. In the word of God, go to that word and use it for prayer. Let's close with prayer, shall we? What kind of sermon would it be on prayer if we didn't actually pray? From CFW Walther's prayer for faith in the word, we pray. O Lord our God, how blessed are we not only have you given us your word, which offers and imparts to us all the fruits of the redemption of your dear son, Jesus Christ, but you have also opened our eyes so that we may know your grace and in firm confidence receive it. Though the world, the law, our heart, and our conscience condemn us, what do we care? Your word declares us free from all guilt. Oh, keep us in such faith until our end and grant that all the members of our congregation may appreciate the great treasure which they possess. Help them and us to triumph over all the attacks of the devil, the world, and our flesh. And finally, to depart this life in peace and to be received into your eternal kingdom. Hear us for the sake of our risen and victorious champion, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and lives in Jesus Christ. Amen. We rise as we continue with what is called Luther's morning prayer. Uh, this is the prayer that we will join in as we open our prayer. We join in praying Luther's prayer together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We do truly pray for the advancement of Christ's kingdom here on earth, that we may share the amazing grace of our God in our words and our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bestow on us your spirit and your grace. We pray for all those who are clothed in Christ by holy baptism, that they may know the depth of the Spirit's love and power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bestow on us your Spirit and your grace. For our congregation, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School, that we may see the great need for God's grace in our surrounding community and boldly respond according to Jesus' great commission. Yes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bestow on us your spirit and your grace. Heavenly Father, in the broken world, redeemed and made whole through your Son, our Lord, there are countless forms of suffering. We know that there is purpose in suffering, namely to draw us and all people to you through Christ, so that we can then love you and each other. Especially today, do we lift up those suffering mentally and emotionally in mind and in spirit. 
and in our hearts as we bring before you various individuals who need your healing grace in their suffering. Keep these, our brothers and sisters, ever mindful of and grateful for your constant loving care. We pray for continued progress, both in awareness of and compassion for the cross of mental or emotional illness, and for continued advancements in medicine to lessen its pain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bestow on us your spirit and grace. And hear the prayers of our hearts at this time. Gracious Father, be with all those uh, who attend St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Continue to protect them by your grace. Bless our students as they grow in the faith and continue to be nurtured in your word. We pray for these and all other concerns that we have coming before the throne of grace that we may find mercy to help us in every time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bestow on us your spirit and your grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has called us to holiness of life by trust and faith in him, giving to us your powerful word and promise of life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Dear friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you always.
rise. Now may these gifts of our Lord's true body and blood strengthen you, preserve you, and keep you in that one true faith in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Thanks and praise to you, O Lord, for your mighty healing word and for our lives renewed through the forgiveness of our sins and your gift of hope of the resurrection. Keep us in this hope all our days, looking forward to your deliverance in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.